Good morning, friends. This is exactly my favorite time of the day, time when I get to be with you. Shall we get started with our song, the way we start every circle time? You ready? Ready to sing with me? All right, let's go. Good morning to you. Good morning to you. We're all in our places with bright smiling faces. And this is the way we start our new day. Ubla Lortek. All right, friends, I want to ask you, do you like what I'm wearing? What is this that I'm wearing? It is my apron. When I put on my apron, I feel ready. I feel ready to do things, make things with my hands, maybe stir, maybe glue, maybe paint. I wear it when I don't want to get things on my clothes the way that we wear a paint shirt in our classroom so we don't get paint on our clothes. But I also like to wear it because it has pockets. See these pockets here? And then I like to put things in my pocket. And I, I have some things in my pocket that, what is in this one? Oh, crayons. Two crayons were in this pocket, a pink one and a green one. Do I remember what I was making with it? Oh, I remember. I'll show you in a minute though. All right, and now, uh, let's see, that's all in that pocket. But on this side, let's see. Oh yeah, well, oh, I have a button. Look at the size of that button. I must have been making something. At, oh, and another little button. Put those in there. Maybe I was sewing something, I don't know. But those were in my pocket. And one last thing. Oh. <laughs> My tiny little doll. She's just perfect for the pocket. Let's see, I have the, she has these little clothes I made her. Do you like this little girl? Um, and she has with her the tiniest little present. Do you see that? Tiny, tiny. I don't know what can be in a present that tiny. Maybe if she unwraps it, she'll tell us. I'm gonna put those things over there for now because I also have the book bag. And let's see what book I brought in the book bag. You ready? Yesterday we had we had a surprise in this book bag. We had we had Fernando. Remember when Fernando came? Well, today I have a a, a another rabbit. Hi. Oh, another rabbit. But you, who are you? You're not Fernando. No, I'm Phyllis. But my friend Fernando said that if I get in the book bag, I could come to. Story Corner. Is that true? Do you think I could come? Well, you're here, and, and I'm glad you're here. I, I, I'm i pleased to make a new friend. How do you do, Phyllis? I'm Miss Lynn, and these are our friends that have come to listen to story time here with me and maybe make something. Oh, good, good, good. I want to listen. I want to make things. What are we going to do? Well, I do have a book, and... Um, it's, it's, um, it's, well, it's one of my favorites. Oh, I think I saw that one in there. Yeah, okay, well, I'm going to need you to be a good listener, just like all our friends out here, Phyllis. Are you ready to begin? Oh, yes, 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 I want to see a book. I want to read a good book. And are you ready to read a good book? Because I'm really ready, and I'm oh, it's so nice to meet you. Hi, you look like a great group. They are a great group, but they're here to listen to a book. Are you ready to join us? Oh, okay. I can, can, I, can I sit on your lap? Sit on my lap? Do you think you'll be able to see the pictures? Well, if you hold the book towards me sometimes, well, I'll hold it so that you can see and our friends can see. All right? You sit right here in my lap. Okay. Come on down here, Phyllis. All right, Phyllis. And friends, this is one of my favorite books. Ferdinand. Uh, Ferdinand is a wonderful story uh, that is written by Monroe Leaf. It's a story that takes place in Spain and it's about a very peaceful bull. You ready to listen? The story of Ferdinand. Putting on my spectacles, getting ready to begin. Here we go. The story of Ferdinand by Monroe Leaf, and the illustrations are by Robert Lawson. They must have been a team. I, I can't see. Oh, there's nothing to see yet. So, here. 
You can you see there? Oh, oh yeah. Okay, turn the page. There's nothing to see. Oh. All right, here we go. Once upon a time in Spain. Ooh, let me see that castle again. Just a moment. There is a castle up on a hill. And over here, there are cows grazing right on top of this hill. The beautiful, tall spires of a castle. Ooh, let me see. Oh, yeah, I like it. Okay. There was a little bull. And his name was Ferdinand. Oh, I like him. Look, he looks friendly. Oh, and he likes butterflies. And he's very peaceful. He must have peace in his heart. Yes, I, well, I, well, let's find out. All the other little bulls that he lived with would run and jump and butt their heads together. What does that mean? Well, they would try to bump their heads together. It was a game they'd play. See, up here they're playing it. Oh, yeah. Ouch, I think that would hurt. Well, I think it might, too. But maybe not if you're a bull. And Ferdinand did not want to run and jump and bump his head together with the other bulls. He liked to just sit quietly and smell the flowers. Mmm, look at that. That does look peaceful. I think you're right. He is peaceful. Yeah. Oh, that looks kind. He had a favorite spot out in the pasture under a cork tree. Favorite place. Let's see. I want to see the favorite place. I want to see the favorite place. Oh, yes. Under the cork tree. Do you have a favorite place? One of my favorite places is in a window with a book. I like to sit in a chair by the window. Oh, how about you guys? I love to sit. Um, I like to sit under a bush full of flowers outside. That okay? Let's let's keep reading. All right. It was his favorite tree, and he would sit in its shade all day and smell the flowers. Oh. Sometimes his mother, who was a cow, would worry about him. She was afraid he would be lonesome out there all by himself. Hmm. No friends for him to play with. Well, why don't you run and play with the other little bulls? And you could skip around and butt your head, she would say to him. But Ferdinand would shake his head. No, I... Uh, I like it better here, where I can just sit quietly and smell the flowers. Oh. His mother saw that he was not lonesome. And because he, she was an understanding mother, even though she was a cow, she let him just sit there and be happy. Oh, he does look very happy. He does, and she looks very happy to let him sit there and be happy. As the years went by, Ferdinand grew and grew until he was very big and strong. Hmm. Oh, I wonder if that's a friend of his. But he does look strong. What is he looking at? Oh, he's looking at all the how all the growth he's done over the years. Down here, then another year went by, and another year, and now he's all the way up here. All the other bulls who had grown up with him in the same pasture would fight each other all day. They would butt their heads together and they would stick each other with their horns. What they wanted most of all was to be picked to fight in the bullfights in Madrid. Ole! Whoa, oh, let's be in there. Yeah, let's go fight. We'll fight the bullfighter. Yeah, we have to be tough though. But not Ferdinand. He still liked to sit just quietly under the cork tree and smell the flowers. Ah, so peaceful here. One day, five men came in very funny hats to pick the biggest, fastest, toughest bull to fight in the bullfights of Madrid. Ole! Oh, they're going to come and see who's the strongest. Ferdinand knew that they wouldn't pick him, and he didn't care. 
So he went out to his favorite cork tree to just sit down. Oh, yeah. Yeah, those guys are here today, but I'm going to smell the flowers. He didn't look where he was sitting. And instead of sitting on the nice cool grass in the shade, he sat on a bumblebee. Oh, watch out, hey, where, watch where you do Oh, well, if you were a bumblebee and a bull sat on you, what would you do? <laughs> you would sting him, and that is just what that bee did to Ferdinand. <laughs> wow, did it hurt. Ferdinand jumped up with a snort. He ran around, <laughs> puffing and snorting and budding and pawing the ground as if he were crazy. Yeah. Oh. The five men saw him, and they all shouted with joy. Here was the largest and fiercest bull of all, just the one for the bullfight in Madrid. Ole! Oh, look how tough he is. We must take him to Madrid. So they took him away for the bullfight day in a cart. It's a long, long way to Madrid. And there's Ferdinand, right there in the cart. What a day it was. Flags were flying. Bands were playing. Look at all the people are leaning out the windows. People down here in the streets are celebrating. They're excited for the bullfights. And all the lovely ladies had flowers in their hair. That's a special day. They're all dressed up their finest and decorated their hair with flowers. And they had a parade into the bull ring. Welcome to the bull fights on Madrid. First came the bandoleros with long, sharp pins with ribbons on them to stick into the ball and make him mad. Oh, yes, we are very tough. We are, aren't we? We are very tough. The balls better watch out for us. Well, we'll see. Next came the picadors who rode skinny horses and they had long spears to stick into the ball and make him madder. Yes, we make the ball matter because we are tough and we have these long spears. Oh, yeah. Then came the matador. The matador was the proudest of all. He thought he was very handsome and he bowed to the ladies. He had a red cape and a sword and was supposed to stick the ball with that sword last of all. Hello, everybody. I am the best of all with my sword. They save me to last, you know. I will be the one that makes the bull the modest. Ha! Then came the ball, and you knew who that was, don't you? Ferdinand. Oh, 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 why is everybody looking at me? Why is everybody out there? Oh, oh, he doesn't look very brave, does he? They called him Ferdinand, the fiercest of all the bandoleros, and they were afraid of him, and the picadors were afraid of him, and the matador was scared stiff. Ferdinand ran to the middle of the ring and everybody shouted and clapped because they thought he was going to fight fiercely and butt his head and snort and stick his horns around. Yay, Ferdinand! Yay, Ferdinand! There he is right there. And they're getting ready to stick him with sharp things. A 
but not Ferdinand. When he got to the middle of the ring, he saw the flowers in all the lovely lady's hair. And he just mm, sat down quietly and smelled the flowers. All those people are waiting and watching for a bullfight? But he, he doesn't want to fight. He wants to smell the flowers. He wouldn't fight and be fierce, no matter what they did. He just sat and smelled. And the bandoleros were mad. And the picadors, they were madder. And the matador was so mad, he cried because he couldn't show off with his fancy cape and his sword. Oh, come on, bull. Yeah, come on, bull. We're really tough, bull. Oh, come on. Oh, do you see the flowers? They're so beautiful. So they had to take Ferdinand home. Oh, I'm going back home in the cart. It's a long way, but it's all right. Look at the birds today. And for all I know, he is sitting there still under his favorite cork tree, smelling the flowers just quietly. And he is very happy. The end. Ah, oh, that's such a nice story, but I didn't get to see very many of the pictures. Oh, well, here, let me show you the last one. Well, that's okay. I, I was making the pictures in my head. And if you don't mind, I'll borrow this book. Well, I, I don't mind. But let's put it back in the book, book bag at least. I wanted to show the friends what I brought so that they could make something today. Oh, I want to make things. Well, I do have on my apron. So let's see. What are we going to make today? Shall we see, Phyllis? What are we going to make? <gasps> this. like me. Well, I, I, I kind of was thinking of our friend. I was thinking of our friend Fernando. And, but you happened along too, so now I'm kind of thinking of Phyllis as well. Well, would you like to make this puppet today? Does that look like Fernando to you? Oh, wait, maybe it looks like me. Phyllis. Well, it could look like Phyllis or Fernando, but all you really need is a paper sack. Oh, I want to learn how to do this. Please, please, let's go over to Art Table. You were watching us the other day. Let's go over to Art Table and see how to make a paper bag rabbit. Now, this is part one. Tomorrow, I'm going to show you how to make something else with our paper sack rabbit. But for now, let's make the rabbit. Oh, so then we can wait and see what comes next for our rabbit. Yes, we'll make the rabbit today and something else tomorrow. Oh, nice to meet you, rabbit. I look forward to spending some time with you. Oh, Phyllis, um, you're very polite. Those are good manners. Let's go over to the art table now. Okay, so Phyllis is going to come over here and we are going to come over as well. Now I'm going to put, I'm going to help Phyllis over onto the art table like this. And now I'm going to take my puppet and I'm going to put it on something to help him stand up. Because if my hand's not in there, he doesn't stand up very well. So I'll put this over here on art table. Okay, I think I'm about ready. Okay. All right, here we come, friends. I'm gonna carefully bring you over here. And we'll look at what we need today for supplies for the art project. So there's our bunny. And I have a few supplies here. You can see I have my special crayon pencils. And I have a pair of scissors and some glue. Now you also will need a paper sack. Just the kind of lunch sack that you might have in your kitchen. Ask your mom or your dad maybe to help you find them and a couple pieces of paper. They could be colored paper or they could be white paper, it's up to you. I've chosen some colored paper, but they can be any color because is this real rabbit or is it a artistic representation of a rabbit? 
In other words, did an artist make it? Doesn't have to look real if an artist made it. And since you're an artist, you can choose how your rabbit will look. So the first thing I did was I took my paper and I folded it in half like this. And then with my scissors, I cut two shapes that are the best I can making them look like ears. So I just curved around and made them kind of long because I want them to stick up over my paper sack. And because I folded the paper before I cut, I have two pieces. This sack will be your puppet and this will be the mouth. So this is the part that's the front. Because as you can see, when I have my puppet on my hand, he can talk if I move this flap up and down with my fingers on the inside. So that's the part you have to make sure is in the front. So I would glue the ears to the back so that this part still comes up, but this part is empty. See that? Okay, after I do that with the ears, I'm gonna do something similar with the hands, but the hands I wanna show you need to be glued on a, on a certain place on your puppet bag. So I'm gonna cut out two shapes that look long, almost like ears, that are a little shorter and curve around to the bottom like this. And there are two because I cut while it was folded. Now look at this puppet. If you see, the place I glued his hands is on the flap that's towards the front. Back here, that's more like his back. But this is more like his front near his stomach. So that's where I'm gonna put the glue hand. So your bag, when you open it, has a flap. Here's the mouth. You wanna be on this front flap, see that? You wanna glue the hands right like that. Put a little bit of glue along the edge here. Just a little line or so, like this. It could be a curly line, it could be a straight line, it can even be some polka dots. But I just glued one part of it, right there at the end here, so that I could bring my sack up to the front and there's the there's the mouth so that's the front and I want to find which one of these side flaps is the front I'm going to tuck it right in between and glue it press it to the front flap and now when I've done that to both sides I want to have it dry open so that any glue any glue doesn't stick it closed so find something in your house, a glue bottle, maybe a flower, a flower vase, a, a, a milk glass works well too. And let your puppet dry a little bit like this so that that flap can dry. I would have both of them done before I stopped and let it dry. And sometimes it can be hard to wait for the glue to dry. So why don't you read a book while you're waiting? Make your puppet today, and tomorrow I'll show you something else we'll make to go with our puppets. So this one, this is the one I made, and will let's see, my need to bring him over here a little closer. I have him standing up on a flower vase. When you have his hands and uh, face on, you can use your dark crayon. You can make eyes like this. See how the eyes on this puppet look? I made a circle, then I put a dot right in the middle. And then I used a pink crayon here for his nose. I gave him some eyebrows and some whiskers. All right. And now he's all ready for when we return tomorrow. And I'll show you what else we'll do next. What do you think, Phyllis? Do you think you can do that? Oh yeah, I'm ready to get ready. Okay, well, let's go back over so we can say
goodbye to our friends. All right, come on, Phyllis. Let's move back over here. Miss Lynn's going to get back in her story chair. And come on, Phyllis. It's polite to say goodbye to our friends before they go on to the next thing they're going to do or make. And I'll see you next time. And I'll see you next time, too. Can I come back? Yes. Phyllis, you can come back. You were such a good listener at story time. And I can hardly wait to make my paper sack rabbit so we can do the next thing tomorrow. What's it going to be? You could just tell me. No, I'm not going to tell you. It's a surprise. Oh, come on. Just a little bit of a secret. You can put it right here in my ears. Mm -mm. Nope. You, Phyllis, and the rest of our friends will have to wait. We'll see you tomorrow, and then I'll tell you what it's all going to be. All right. Bye. Bye.